Animals range in size, shape and biology drastically, but there is one thing that unifies more than 95% of them and every known land animal, something that almost all animals inherited from an incredibly ancient common ancestor hundreds of millions of years ago. Squid, insects, reptiles and mammals may be very different in a number of ways, but they are all connected by their symmetry, where they have a left and a right side which are mirror images of each other. This group of animals is one of the largest categorizations used to label a group in the entire animal kingdom, and they are known as the bilaterians because of their bilateral symmetry. The two-sided symmetry that most animals have is so common it is sometimes easy to miss that some animals have a different type of symmetry, and some animals have no symmetry at all. Branching just outside of the bilaterian group are the cnidarians, that contain animals like jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral. Cnidarians are united by a type of cell they have called a cnidocyte that lets them deliver a sting to other organisms, but they also have a different type of symmetry to bilaterians they have radial symmetry, where their symmetry points outwards from a central axis, usually a body and spikes or tentacles pointing outwards from a central point, and they make up almost all of the non-bilateral animals that aren't microscopic. There are also sponges, which apart from some notable exceptions have no symmetry. They are multiple celled organisms, but the cells have not been organised in any sort of symmetry and the shape of the organism is dictated by which side of the sponge is receiving more nutrients. And although this covers most types of symmetry that animals exhibit today, these aren't the only types that have ever existed. In a time known as the Ediacaran, over 540 million years ago, some creatures took on different forms of symmetry still. The fossil of an ancient organism was found in the 560 million year old rocks of central England that was named Charnia, and then later a whole fossilised ecosystems of these funny organisms were discovered on the east coast of Canada. This ancient habitat that predated the Cambrian explosion was named the Avalon Explosion because most of the fossils have been found on Canada's Avalon Peninsula. Charnia and the other organisms were named Rangiomorphs and they looked a lot like leaves, although they lived too deep in the ocean to be able to photosynthesize, so couldn't have been plants. What they are isn't entirely known, but most scientists think that they are stem animals a very ancient lineage that branched away early in the evolution of animals that has no descendants that survived into the present. But one of the most unique and interesting things about these organisms is that they grew in a different way to anything that is alive today, as they grew symmetrically in fractals. They grew by repeating a singular basic pattern over and over again, just being a smaller version each time. But the Ediacaran wasn't just all strange fractal organisms, and bilaterians do start to appear in the fossil record towards the end of the period. In the rocks of central Australia, there are preserved ecosystems dating to about 555 million years ago, containing the earliest bilateral animals in the fossil record. There was one ancient animal that lived among these ecosystems, known as Sprigina, that looked a lot like a trilobite, and some scientists believe that they were related to the trilobites, although this isn't known for certain and there was another bilaterian named Kimberella, which is a small animal that was thought to have lived like a slug, feeding off microbial life on the sea floor. Some scientists think that it may have been an incredibly primitive mollusk, but again with such ancient creatures, relationships with other animals are difficult to work out. There was also a small worm-like animal called Icaria wariutia that was about the size of a grain of rice that burrowed into the sands of this ancient Australian seabed. So by the Ediacaran, bilateral animals had evolved, but they were fairly obscure and were outnumbered by animals with either radial symmetry or animals with other forms of symmetry. But during the Cambrian explosion, the bilaterians became much more successful, with many new forms starting to appear, and today they are by far the most common type of animal. So why is this? Once animals have evolved a certain trait, this can open up or make other evolutionary pathways more likely. For example, different carnivorous mammals have evolved retractable claws on separate occasions, but carnivorous reptiles and birds haven't. And the ability to produce silk has evolved in a few separate occasions among different arthropod groups, but it is very rare in other animals, showing that the structure of the arthropod body or their lifestyle makes the evolution of silk production more likely. Bilaterians are the same, 
their two-sided symmetry has encouraged or made the evolution of other traits down the line more likely that have given them an advantage over the animals with other forms of symmetry. In its simplest form, the body plan of a bilaterian is basically a tube with two openings, a mouth and an anus connected by a digestive tract. Over time, sensory organs, or at least the most dominant ones, have developed at the head end above the mouth. So they have a body plan with a defined front end that gives them a clear direction of travel. They encounter stimuli, like light or chemicals from food, and then move forward to apprehend it. So their body shape enables for very purposeful movement, which gives them a big advantage over non-bilaterians. That for the most part use lures or just drift through the ocean waiting for the food to come to them. There are non-bilaterian animals like box jellyfish that actively hunt fish rather than drifting towards it, but in the grand scheme of things they are quite slow animals, and they are the exception rather than the rule. Whereas complex sensory organs at the top of the head and purposeful precise movements are commonplace among nearly all bilaterians. Additionally, two-sided symmetry is a good shape for moving, as it offers a platform to have an equal set of limbs or fins on both sides of the body. Having a symmetrical set of limbs to either walk across the sea floor or push through the water are perfect to propel forward in a straight line, and offers a lot more stability as they can push from both sides of the body with equal force, and so this would have helped them move faster, but also more efficiently than non-bilaterians. This may also be the reason why bilaterians are the only animals that have conquered dry land as well, because once out of the water, gravity only becomes less forgiving and a good stable body shape only becomes more important. It's also possible that bilaterian body plans has caused these animals to become more intelligent. The phenomena where the sensory organs have trended to become more concentrated at one end of the animal over time is called cephalization, and it is very important because it correlates with the nerves being concentrated on one side of the body as well, or in other words, the development of a brain. And over time, this process of nerves concentrating on one side of the body has created a well-defined head section and sophisticated brain in very different animal groups, like vertebrates, cephalopods, and even arthropods. And although radial organisms definitely have nerves, there is no species alive today that matches the complex brains in multiple bilaterian groups. Although symmetry offers many advantages, there are times it can get in the way of a specific lifestyle as there are many examples of animals that have evolved to break their symmetry. Crossbill birds have a beak that doesn't meet in the middle, and instead cross over. These birds have specialised to eat pine cones, and their unusual beak shape helps them access the seeds contained further inside. There are also species of fish, like plaice, that have made the extreme adaptation of orientating their entire body on its side as its natural position, to be able to hide itself on the sea floor better. In order to still be able to see while hugging the sea bed, they had evolved to have both their eyes on the side of their head. And probably most famously, out of the symmetry breaking animals, is that some species of male crab have one claw larger than the other, which can sometimes be so large that it makes up half of their body weight. Unlike in other animals, the giant claw doesn't seem to help them. In fact, it might actually hinder them in their everyday life, as they can only use one claw to get food, whereas female crabs use both claws. Male crabs have a large claw to help attract females and fight off rival males. In these examples, the animals are still largely bilateral, and just have the odd feature that breaks the trend of the rest of the body. But there are animals that take this much further. Starfish and sea urchins, also known as echinoderms, may look like radial life, and their nervous system is spread around the body like radial organisms. But they are actually bilaterians. In fact, at the larvae stage, these animals have a clearly defined head, and although as adults they appear radial, studies have shown that both starfish and sea urchins have a preferred direction of travel. So at some point in their evolution, selective pressures force starfish and other echinoderms to live more like a radial life form. So having two-sided symmetry isn't always the best way to survive for every animal. But the bilaterian body plan shows that we sometimes take for granted how similar we are to even the most distantly related animals. Thank you for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.